Hey guys, Spudknocker here, as always, and today we're going to take a look at one of the most difficult skills to master in DCS World, air-to-air -air refueling. This video is going to be an overview of the best practices while air-to-air -air refueling and help address some of its most difficult parts and hopefully leave you guys with a new perspective on the skill that should help you practice on your own. In this video, we're going to be using the controls indicator on the bottom left of the screen. Turned on by pressing right control and enter by default on your keyboard if you want to use it yourself. I recommend you watch this video in your home cockpit with your hands on the controls and follow me through the motions that you see on the controls indicator. This goes for your rudder pedals, your stick, and your throttles. This video is not about showing off how perfectly I can air-to-air -air refuel, but rather how to correct your control inputs when things start to go wrong and allow you to continue the air-to-air -air refueling event and prevent a mishap, which can quickly of course turn deadly with aircraft in this close of a proximity. You are not expected to have every air-to-air -air refueling event go perfectly. Real pilots fall out of the basket, miss, or get into oscillations and need to try again as well. Many aircraft and many pilots have had to turn back from strikes or divert due to issues with mid-air refueling. In other words, do not expect it to go perfectly every single time, and it definitely will not go perfectly every single time. My personal biggest piece of advice, relax. There is a very good reason why pilots in real life shoot the shit with the boom operator, sing songs, or tell jokes, because it helps you stay loose. Tense muscles are slow and imprecise, whereas relaxed muscles are quick, responsive, and precise. There's a reason why you don't death grip a baseball bat or a golf club, so don't death grip your stick in your cockpit. My second most important piece of advice, patience. DCS World has an interesting dichotomy in that it's full of fast jets and players like to fly fast and pull lots of Gs making the average DCS World pilot rather impatient, even if you don't overtly feel that way. Time, Only the best DCS World pilots turn the corner and realize that being patient and disciplined, you are going to be more successful, not just in combat, but in all parts of a sortie, from startup to shutdown at home base. A typical air-to-air -air refueling evolution in DCS World should take the player 12 to 20 minutes at minimum, so please relax and be patient. So let's walk through a typical DCS World air-to-air -air refueling event, cycling the view between multiple different airframes. As you get near your assigned tanker track, we need to input our TACAN channel into the aircraft to allow us to navigate to and find the correct tanker. Of course, next we also need to tune our radios to the correct frequency to communicate with the correct tanker aircraft. Note that large strikes will have many, many tankers, and you will be assigned to a specific tanker aircraft to rendezvous with. This guide assumes that you already know how to work the navigational systems and radios for your chosen or favorite airframe. The next part of this evolution requires the most patience from you, the pilot, and that of course is the intercept. Your patience will run thin and your nerves will become heightened as you look at your fuel gauge and realize, holy shit, I need juice right now and you start to ask your Rio or wingman what the standard deviation of the fuel gauge is. I know this has definitely happened to me. This nervousness will make you want to intercept the tanker ASAP, causing you to push up the throttle and get there yesterday. However, this usually leads to flying the intercept at much too fast an airspeed, resulting in blowing right past the tanker and causing you to expend even more fuel as you frantically try to maneuver back into position behind the tanker. On the intercept, slow and steady wins the race. The better the setup, the easier the entire event will be and the less desperate your fuel situation will become. This is something I've had to learn the hard way many, many times in Spud's Buds multiplayer missions. 
When you call up the tanker on the radio, stating your intent to refuel, the tanker will tell you his altitude as well as his airspeed. Mexico, one, one, in field, one, one, request rejoin. The best I can figure, the airspeed figure he is giving you is in true airspeed. As a rule of thumb in DCS world, reduce this figure by 15 to 20 knots to match your indicated airspeed you see in your cockpit or up on your HUD. When you get within about 2.5 DME from the tanker, do your best to slow your aircraft down to match his airspeed and remain a few hundred feet below his altitude in order to approach the tanker without hitting his wake turbulence. If you end up hitting wake turbulence, maintain a wings level attitude and do not worry about your altitude. Just ride it out till you get to the other side of the wake turbulence. Approach the tanker slowly. Less experienced pilots should work with less than a 50 knots of closure speed, especially when you're close in with the tanker. While more experienced DCS world pilots who are adept at using their speed brake and throttle can force it a little bit with higher closure speeds. As we get in close to the tanker, ensure you're staying ahead of your aircraft in terms of throttle and stick movements as well as your speed brake. Remember that airplanes do not react instantly to control inputs. You must instinctively anticipate how your aircraft is going to react to various throttle, stick, and rudder inputs as well as your speed brake as you get in closer and closer to the tanker. Aircraft like the F-14A Tomcat and JF-17 Thunder will be far more difficult to refuel due to their engine's slow response time, with the F-16 also being difficult due to its near instantaneous throttle responsiveness. The F-18 Hornet occupies the perfect mushy throttle middle ground in my opinion. If the tanker starts to turn, do not panic. This is actually a good thing and will help you regulate and dampen out pitch changes due to power inputs. Tomcat jocks will especially love a banked tanker. Match your airspeed's bank angle to the bank angle the of the tanker. With no back pressure on the stick, your turn rate will match the turn rate of the tanker, allowing you to follow him through the turn perfectly, regardless of which aircraft you're currently flying. As you get closer and closer, decrease your rate of closure to only a few knots, and preset your height below the tanker to match what is required to get the probe into the drogue or for the boom operator to stick his boom into your receptacle. With your altitude matching that of the drogue or the boom, try to reduce or eliminate the number of pitch inputs. Ensure that you have the aircraft absolutely trimmed out so that your stick can remain neutral in the pitch axis for the entire evolution. If you need to slide left or right to get lined up with the drogue or boom, Increase or decrease your bank angle and let the natural increase or reduction in the horizontal component of lift slide you left and right slowly and gently. As soon as you get to the point where everything looks right to slide into that drogue or to give the boom operator the best chance, transition your sight picture away from the drogue and up to the wing or fuselage of the tanker and start flying formation of the tanker and absolutely forget about the drogue or the boom. If you try to fly the probe into the drogue, you will miss every single time, guaranteed. Except DCS F-A-18 pilots, the best Hornet pilots can just force it in with sheer will and fighter pilot spirit. But for the rest of us, this will usually lead to a PIO or pilot induced oscillation. A snowballing effect where pilot inputted corrections and resulting errors increase at an exponential rate until you either rip the probe off, destroy the drogue or collide with the tanker. If you get into an oscillation, immediately retard the throttles to avoid a collision, and release the stick. As you fall back from the tanker, relax your hands and feet, and reset behind and below the tanker, and very slowly inch your way back to the tanker, making sure to dampen out any violent control inputs. If you have done everything correctly, and your sight picture has shifted away from the drogue, and up to the tanker, you should be slowly sliding in your probe into the drogue. The boom operator should also be sticking you with his boom. Once you are in, 
you need to quickly retard the throttles in an attempt to match the speed of the tanker. This is where 99% of DCS World pilots will fail, because it's easy to get in, but it's very hard to stay in. If you do not retard the throttle, you will advance on the tanker and eventually run out of hose slack and pull your probe right out of the drogue, or the boom operator will just simply refuse to stick his boom into your receptacle. Now we need to start stroking the throttle. The twitchy, quick, and instinctual throttle movements you see in the controls indicator. After the initial reduction in power once in the drogue, or once the boom operator is hooked up with you, you will continue to decelerate until you either fall out of the drogue or fall back from the tanker. Thus, more power is needed right away. Those poor, poor JF-17 and F-14A pilots, right? We need to keep moving the throttle back and forth, slowly trying to dampen out the throttle movements to keep on station with the tanker. I call this action the stroking the throttle. You never, ever want to increase or decrease the throttle and leave it there. It will only cause you to accelerate or decelerate away from the tanker. Also, do not try to use your airspeed indicator to match airspeeds with the tanker. You will fail every single time. Instead, use your eyeballs to see where you are in relation to the tanker's wing or fuselage as your indicator as to whether more or less power is needed. Your airspeed indicator can be a secondary or advisory instrument, but always use your position in relation to the tanker as the primary, even when you're air-to-air -air refueling at night and you can't see the tanker quite as easily. As you get more settled in behind the tanker, over time, your throttle movements should dampen out slowly and naturally. But they should always be constantly moving, especially in an aircraft with slower power responsiveness. In these types of aircraft, it can be very, very easy to get into a power oscillation. But we can avoid this by staying ahead of the aircraft and visualizing how our throttle inputs will impact our airspeed over time. As you try your best to stay in the drogue or in place behind the tanker for the boom operator, make as few pitch changes as possible. Pitch changes are the most likely to lead to an oscillation or cause you to pop out of the drogue by getting too high or too low. If the tanker is in a turn, a good way to dampen out unintended pitch changes is to add some right rudder and induce a bit of a slip. This can reduce the chances of climbing or descending out of the drogue and getting into a pitch oscillation. So if everything has gone right, at this point, you are now safely in the drogue or behind the tanker with the boom in your receptacle. And you probably haven't taken a breath since you got within one nautical mile of the tanker. So please, breathe, take a deep breath, and release the tension in your hands, feet, and torso. Hum a tune or sing a song to your wingman. If you are practicing alone, I highly, highly recommend listening to some music. Remember, rule number one is relax. Being tense only hurts your chances of successfully completing the air-to-air -air refueling event. If you do lose your spot in the drogue or behind the tanker and the refueling event is interrupted, do not panic and do not try to reacquire the boom or drogue right away. Smoothly and gently retard the throttles and fall back away from the tanker. Regain the initial spot you had before easing up to the boom or the drogue. The correct altitude below the tanker match the bank angle of the tanker, and ease yourself back to the drogue or boom. This is where rule number two comes in. Patience. Do not try to force it or rush it. The more relaxed, smooth, and patient you are with your aircraft, the more quickly it will go, and the less critical your fuel situation will become. Take a deep breath. Relax your hands and feet. Fly formation with the tanker for a moment before making a second attempt. Slow and steady wins the race. The more smooth our control inputs are when we fail, the easier it's going to be to get rehooked up with the tanker. And don't worry, you aren't expected to stay in the drogue the entire time. Even in real life, pilots fall out of the drogue and require multiple hookups to take on the required amount of fuel to make it home or continue on with the mission. And just like in real life, your mental state and the attitude when you fall out of the drogue impacts how quickly you can reacquire it and start receiving more of that sweet, sweet JP-5. With enough patience and perfect airmanship, you will eventually get to our prescribed amount of juice or top off our tanks and we can disconnect from the tanker. If we're refueling in a multiplayer mission or a campaign mission with lots of other fighters gathering at the tanker, we want to make sure we slowly disconnect from the tanker. 
gently retard the throttles and slowly fall back away from it. Look around diligently for your wingman or other aircraft and slide slowly to the right hand side of the tanker. While using the same deliberate and gentle control inputs you used for the hookup with the tanker. While being extremely careful not to hit any other fighters who may have gathered around us at this particular tanker. At this point, you're done with the air-to-air -air refueling event, and you can continue on with the mission to put warheads on foreheads, or be confident that you have enough fuel to make it back home for a trap on the carrier, or a landing back at home plate. I hope this video helps you guys out when it comes to air-to-air -air refueling, not just in one specific aircraft, but how you should approach and execute it in all DCS World aircraft. So please stay healthy out there guys, and of course fly safe, and if you like the video please give us a like and a subscribe, and we'll see you in the next one.